Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Zoro Davila. Welcome back to Save Our System IT. Today I will continue to part number 22 of our BusyBox series. Trace route prints the route that packets take to a network host. The internet is a large and complex aggregation of network hardware connected together by gateways. Tracking the route your packets follow or finding a gateway that's discarding your packets can be difficult. Traceroute utilizes the IP protocol's time to live field and attempts to elicit an ICMP time exceed response from each gateway along the path to the host. The only mandatory parameter is the destination host name or IP number. The default probe datagram lengths to 40 bytes. But this may be increased by specifying a packet size in bytes after the destination host name. Traceroute attempts to trace the route and IP packet with follow to some internet host by launching probe packets with a small TTL, or time to live, and then listening for an ICMP time exceeded reply from a gateway. It starts its probes with a time to live of 1 and increases this by a by one until it gets an ICMP port unreachable or TCP reset, which means we got to the host or hit the max, which defaults to 30 hops. Three probes by default are sent at each time to live setting and a line is printed showing the TTL address of the gateway and round trip time of each probe. The address can be followed by additional information when requested. If the probe answers uh, come from a different gateway, uh, from different gateways, the address of each corresponding system will be printed. If there is no response within 5.0 seconds, which is the default, an asterisk is printed for that probe. After the trip time, some additional annotation can be printed, like exclamation mark capital H, exclamation mark capital N, or exclamation mark capital P, which is a host, network, or protocol unreachable. Uh, exclamation mark capital S, source route failed. The same with capital F, fragmentation needed. Uh, capital X, communication administratively prohibited. Exclamation mark capital V, host precedence violation, capital C, precedence cut off in effect, or exclamation mark num, uh, a number, which is the IP, ICMP unreachable code for that number. If almost all the probes result in uh, some kind of unreachable, trace route will give up an exit. You don't want the destination host to process the UDP probe packets. So the destination port is set to an unlikely value. You can change it with the hyphen P flag. There is no such a problem for ICMP or TCP trace routing. For TCP, we use a half-open technique, which prevents our probes to be seen by applications under the destination host. In the modern network environment, the traditional trace route methods cannot be always applicable because of widespread use of firewalls. Such firewalls filter the unlikely UDP ports or even ICMP echoes. To solve this, some additional trace routing methods are implemented, including TCP. Such methods try to use particular protocol and source destination ports in order to bypass firewalls, to be seen by firewalls just as a start of an allowed type of network session. Everything mentioned previously applies to the traceroute 6 command, with one small difference. Traceroute 6 can only be used on systems that use IPv6 addresses. If we try to use it on a machine that uses an IPv4 address, we will receive an error. True, just like false, is a command whose function returns a predetermined exit status. Programmers and scripts often use the exit status of a command to assess success, meaning exit status zero, or failure, a non-zero, of the command. The true and false commands represent the logical values of command success because true returns zero and false returns one. The commands are usually employed in conditional statements and loops. The TTY command is used for controlling a terminal. The file slash dev slash TTY is a character file with major number 5 and minor number 0, usually of mode 0666 and owner group root.tty. It is a synonym for the controlling terminal of a process, if any. In addition to the IOCTL request supported by the device that TTY refers to, the IOCTL request uh, TIOCNOTTY is supported. TIOCNOTTY detaches the calling process from its controlling terminal. If the process is the session leader, then SIG hop and SIG con signals are sent to the foreground processes group, and all processes in that current session lose their controlling TTY. This IOCTL call works only if on a file descriptor is connected to the slash dev slash TTY. It is used by daemon processes when they are invoked by a user at a terminal. The process attempts to open slash dev slash TTY. If the open succeeds, it detaches itself from the terminal by using TIOCNO TTY, while if the open fails, it's obviously not attached to a terminal and does not need to detach itself. UDHCPC is a very small DHCP client program geared towards embedded systems. The letters are an abbreviation for micro DHCP client. The program tries to be fully functional and RFC 2131 compliant. The program accepts all options on the command line and calls external scripts to handle the configuration of interfaces. UDHCPD is a micro DHCP server. 
The Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol DHCP is a standardized network protocol used on the Internet Protocol Networks, IP networks. The DHCP is controlled by a DHCP server that dynamically distributes network configuration parameters, such as IP addresses for interfaces and services. A router or a residential gateway can be enabled to act as a DHCP server. A DHCP server enables computers to request IP addresses and network parameters automatically, reducing the need for a network administrator or a user to configure these settings manually. In the absence of a DHCP server, each computer or other device uh, on the network, like a printer, needs to be statically, meaning that manually, assigned to an IP address. The U-mount command detaches dimension file systems from the file hierarchy. A file system is specified by giving the directory where it has been mounted. Given the special device on which the file system lives may also work, but is obsolete, mainly because it will fail in case this device was mounted on more than one directory. Note that a file system cannot be unmounted when it's busy. For example, when there are open files on it, or when some process has its working directory there, or when a swap file on it is in use. The offending process can even be unmounted itself. It opens libc, and libc in its turn may open, for example, locale files. A lazy unmount avoids this problem. The uname command within Linux allows you to view system information about your Linux environment. The uname command on its own isn't particularly useful. You can try it for yourself. Open up a terminal window and type the following command, uname, that's all. The chances are that the only word that is returned is Linux. Unless you're using one of those distributions deliberately designed to look like other operating systems, such as Zorin, Q4TS, or Chromixium, you probably already knew that. If no option is specified, uname assumes the hyphen S option. At the other end of the scale, you can use the following command, uname hyphen A. And this time, you'll get a whole raft of information, like kernel name, node name, kernel release, kernel version, machine, processor, hardware platform, and operating system. And that's about it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website, www.sosit.co. Again, that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.